Welcome back, compadres. Today we're talking economics and the economic yardsticks used in petroleum engineering. Specifically, we're going to look at two of these, internal rate of return and net present value to evaluate the profitability of a gas well using actual decline data in Excel. So why are the economic yardsticks important? Number one, they allow you to evaluate the profitability of an investment opportunity. Number two, they allow you to compare different investment opportunities on the same playing field so that you can choose the most profitable one. And number three, they allow you to effectively communicate with management because they're going to be looking for these numbers in order to make their decision on whether they want to invest their money or the company's money into that project. So you can see why this is very important to understand. So guys, I'm just going to stop rambling here. We're going to go ahead and go into the example. I'm sure you'll understand it after we get through. So let's get started. So there's some common economic yardsticks used in petroleum engineering to help us decide what investment opportunities we want to proceed forward with. So I'm going to talk about five today. We're going to talk about one of them is net present value. Another economic yardstick is payback period. There's profit to investment ratio, average value profit, and internal rate of return. Each of these can be categorized into one of two categories, undiscounted economic yardsticks and discounted economic yardsticks. Essentially undiscounted it does not take into account the time value of money and interest rate. Discounted economic yardsticks take into account the time value of money. We're going to talk about two of these today, internal rate of return and net present value. And we're actually going to go through and calculate it for a gas well using production decline data. So we'll show you how to do that. The first economic yardstick, net present value, essentially discounts future cash flows to the present so that investment opportunities can be compared at the same reference point. If MPV is greater than zero, the project should be accepted. So there's three fundamental equations you need, you can use to calculate a present value. The first one is for individual cash flows at discrete time periods. For example, if you see this graph right here, you have an individual cash flow at a time period of five. So what you would do is you'd plug in your, your parameters here, your interest rate and your time period, and then you'd multiply it by a discount factor. And essentially that will discount it back to time zero. So you can see by that animation, you do that for each individual cash flow, and then you add them together to get your net present value. The next equation is for constant periodic cash flows. So you can use that same equation we looked at previously to discount all of these, but in reality, you can use some little math and actually simplify your calculation into one step. So for constant payments, for example, if you have constant operating cash outflow, or constant operating cost over a given time period, you can discount that all at once. And so essentially you would multiply that by the discount factor and then it would take those and discount them to time zero into one, uh, one value essentially. So that animation shows you how to do that there. And then the last one is for geometric or constant cash flows that change by constant percentage over time. So this equation be, would be directly applicable to a well an exponential decline because it's going to be a constant percentage change over each time period so you want to apply this. There's also some other cases you can apply this to um, but this is the equation essentially it takes into account cash flows that look like this that decrease or increase at a constant percentage and it'll discount it back all the time zero. The next economic yardstick is internal rate of return. Essentially it measures how quickly profits are returned and it does not directly measure total profits. But the one thing you need to remember is that the internal rate of return is the rate where MPV equals zero. So if you plot a present value profile at different interest rates, essentially your internal rate of return would fall, would be your x-intercept on this graph as indicated there. And so 
IRR is important because for independent projects, if the required rate of return is less than our internal rate of return, then we should accept the project. For mutually exclusive projects, we have to uh, dig into it a little bit deeper. But essentially, your required rate could be like, um, it's hard to calculate, but for example, if you're investing your money into stock and you're assuming that you're going to get a 10% rate of return each year, then if you go determine your IRR for an investment opportunity and that IRR is greater than 10%, then you would accept it. If the IRR is less than the required rate, then you'd give it a no-go and you want to take that money, you would invest in the project and invest it into stock. So I hope that makes sense, but we're going to go through and work through an example, a petroleum engineering example to calculate IRR and MPV of a gas well. So let's get to it. We're going to use the same rate time data of the gas well we used previously. Here's our decline curve data. We fit our ARPS equation to this data and we've actually forecasted it to an economic limit. And we have our economic parameters we used over here. So we're going to do that and essentially this is our production decline data. In reality, you would want to honor this production decline data and consider it in your net present value calculation. However, because the data from this well is very sporadic, you can see our time skips by monthly and then it goes and, and skips two months here and then it goes down here and it's skipping like 600 days. It's not ideal to do a net present value calculation using that so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to not cheat but because we have a good fit right here I'm going to use our ARPS equations and calculate net present value using those values instead makes things a little bit simpler in petroleum engineering you don't always get uh, clean data in fact you don't get it at all so you have to <laughs> improvise and approximate but you can see our fits pretty good so I'm comfortable uh, forecasting off of our ARPS equations or calculating our economic parameters using the forecast parameters. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate net present value. This is step number one and so for this example we've simplified it we're going to can consider discounted revenue, discounted operating cost, and drilling and completion costs. So our discounted revenue is just revenue from our gas stream. So I have wrote a VBA function to determine some of this stuff, make it easy, but the ultimate goal is to calculate MPV and IRR. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate our discount factor for our discounted revenue. Essentially, if you look at this equation right here, this is the equation we're applying, the equation for individual cash flows, except I'm taking out the price because we're assuming it's constant over a given time period, and I'm just using the rate over the discount factor. I'm calculating it for each rate, and then I'm going to divide it by EUR. This lets me see EUR and see if it's close to what we predicted here. And also, we're going to calculate from this code we're going to get life and days because we're going to need that to calculate A over P. But I'll go into the code later. Let's go ahead and just work through the example. The VBA code is called discount. It's called EUR discount factor rate time. And so it's going to take these arguments. It's going to take our interest date and the annual interest rate. And you want to uh, just leave that alone. It's going to take our initial rate our initial decline, you want to freeze these, be boundary dominated, and our economic limit. And so it's going to return the well life and then the EUR. You can see we're a little bit off what we predicted here, but that's because we honored our rate time actual data. In this case, we're just using the equation to do it, ARPS equation. So, but but it's close, so I'm comfortable with that. It's a good approximation. And you want to carry this all the way down at different interest rates. 
and you can see our production discount factor decreases as you increase the interest rate that makes sense the next thing we want to do is calculate the discount factor for our operating cost and so we're using this equation this is our equation we saw on the slides for constant uh, periodic payments except it's rearranged where you have in the form of A over P we know our A is going to be our constant payment $100 per, per day and so we can essentially take this equation calculate this value and take our operating cost and divide it by this and we have our net present value just simple math guys all this is simple math um, if you know algebra 1 you can do this so Excel has a built-in function called PMT payment function I guess you call it it takes in rate and because I didn't code this rate needs to have units consistent with what we're looking at because we're using an interest rate because we're using time periods and days we have to convert our interest rate to a daily interest rate so we're going to take our discount factor which is our interest rate divided by 365 to get it in the correct units and then we're going to get uh, put in n per as our life and days and then present value we're going to assume it's equal to 1 so that we can get this ratio A over P excuse me and it's going to give you a negative value which is perfect because that's a uh, outgoing cash flow but I'm going to go ahead and just throw in a negative here because I'm going to uh, it'll make sense when I calculate it but you want to carry that all the way down at different interest rates so now we can calculate our net present value using this equation right here so we have our production discount to get our discounted revenue we're going to take our production discount multiply it by EUR so that we can remove this denominator and then we're going to multiply it by the price so that we can put it back in the form of this equation and then we're going to subtract out our operating costs and our drilling and completion costs so that's simply going to be our production discount times our EUR times our price which we're assuming is two dollars and ninety one cents per thousand cubic feet you want to freeze that and then you're going to subtract out your operating cost so it's going to be a hundred dollars per day divided by A over P I don't want to freeze the hundred dollars per day because that's going to be carried all the way through we assumed that value is constant throughout the life of the well and then drilling and completion costs that's all you need to take off and because drilling and completion costs is an initial investment you don't need to discount it it's already at time zero so you want to freeze that so that's our MPV and you can see we calculated MPV at different interest rates. I preformatted this graph to take in those values. It takes MP, it plots MPV versus the interest rate at which we calculated at. And you can see this is our present value profile. So from this graph, you should be able to approximate internal rate of return. It's the intercept right here. And so once to calculate that, you can either do a linear approximation or you can calculate it using solver in Excel and so that's the approach we're going to use today the next step we want to do is calculate internal rate of return so to do that we're going to use the same equations we've done so we're going to copy this formula down and if you recall IRR occurs where MPV equals zero so you're gonna go apply solver solvers in your data tab what it's gonna take is it's gonna take your objective which is the value you want to change we want to change MPV we want to set it to a value of zero by changing our interest rate if you press solve solver should find that X intercept for you and it calculated our internal rate of return to be 24% if we look at our graph over here our net 
our present value profile. You can see our internal rate of return falls between 20 and 30 percent. We got 24 percent, so that's believable. So guys, that, that's it. We've calculated MPV at different discount rates, and then we've calculated internal rate of return. The discount rate, a lot of oil and gas companies use between 10 and 12 percent, but it varies. So um, that's just something you have to get from your employer. But look, we did a whole economic analysis of this well to get MPV, IRR, and a present value profile. You could present this to management, and then he can make his decision from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go look into the code, step through the code to show you how... I calculated this so that you could modify it to your liking or you could use it uh, for your projects. So let's go ahead and look into that. So we're going to step through the EUR discount rate time code. That was the code used to calculate the production discount and it returned our our well life and days and also EUR. So let's go ahead and step through it. So it's called EUR discount factor rate time and it takes parameters such as interest rate, initial rate, the initial decline, B boundary dominated, and an economic limit rate. It's going to take our interest rate in as an annual discount rate and it's going to convert that to units of days by dividing it by 365 and then I wrote a VBA function to calculate the life given the economic limit B boundary diamondated initial rate and initial decline from ARPS and then I round that value and then I initialize two parameters that I'm going to use to calculate our discount production factor. So I initialize those to zero and then this is where I start to apply my economic equations. So I start at time zero and I go to the end of the life of the well. I calculate a rate using the ARPS input parameters and then this is how I calculate discounted EUR. It's essentially our present value function with the cost taken out of it. So you can see here it's it's going to be a rate divided by 1 plus interest rate to the power of the the time that it's taken at. And then at the same time I'm calculating a cumulative EUR and I run it through a for loop, continue to calculate that to the end of life of the well. And then what I do is I want to return three parameters, our production discount factor is simply our discounted EUR divided by our cumulative EUR calculated in this for loop. And then I return the life of the well, which is calculated from a simple equation using ARPS equations. And then I also return the cumulative EUR. And then that returns all my arguments that ends the function and then this is a function this is our life function right here I call that and it's just if it's exponential decline it's one equation if it's not then it's another equation these equations can be found in a textbook real simple and then it returns that returns the life and there you have it so that was it guys that's all I did pretty simple uh, simple math nothing complicated no numerical methods just simple stuff I suggest you go through the code and uh, try to understand it and then you can modify it to your liking but I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you next time adios